picture the scene. A man dressed in heavy furs to keep out the cold, scratching away by quill pen, by candlelight, almost 500 years ago. He's using the best bits of his personal library of 600 books and more than 60 manuscripts to create a prayer book that anyone can understand. He is Thomas Cranmer, a leading member of the Reformation and Archbishop of Canterbury in the reign of Henry VIII. Cranmer's Book of Common Prayer subsequently was used for every service in all Anglican churches across the country, until the 1970s, that is. Liturgical reform in the Church of England prompted fears that Cranmer's prayer book would become obsolete, even though it remains the national standard of teaching for the Church of England. That is why the Prayer Book Society was created, helping churchgoers to rediscover the majesty and spiritual depth of the prayer book. In 1989, in a bid to encourage young people to use the prayer book, the Society created a national competition annually, the Cranmer Awards. Each year, more than 300 young people aged 11 to 18 are nominated by their schools or churches to take part in regional heats. At the finals, they compete to share £1,000 of prize money by reading from memory in front of an audience of parents, clergy and society members. Many young people are struck by the beauty and relevance of Cranmer's language. One said, reading and understanding the prayer book led me to a greater understanding of the plays of William Shakespeare. Previously, I'd found them hard to understand. Now, I'm their greatest fan. Let's now join the finalists at Worcester's Old Palace, where I'm about to present the prizes. The reading for the feast day of St. Thomas the Apostle. The Collect. Almighty and ever-living God, who for the more confirmation of the faith did suffer thy holy apostle Thomas to be doubtful in thy son's resurrection. There was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints, and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. We celebrate common prayer and prayer is personal yet common also means for everyone. And the prayers that were recited today may hold intensely personal private associations but they are Thomas Cranmer's gift to all of us. The Book of Common Prayer is, is a deep, deep well. It's deeper than a baboon's tummy button. This, this is a deep, a deep well of, of history, poetry, and philosophy that you have here. As we saw today, it's still living heritage. Teenagers relish it. Now, some of our church leaders might say, well, no, no one's going to understand that old language. That's rot. Our contestants today, they not only understood it, they made it soar. Now the Prayer Book Society admirably has kept Cranmer's standard flying through recent dangerous decades. I sense an easing of that siege. The plastic modernism and knee-jerk cultural self-loathing of the baby boomer generation is waning. And it is once again okay. I think it's okay, isn't it, to be proud of your heritage. You can go to church and you can pray while turning those same delicate sort of onion skin thin pages that your great grandmother may have handled during the Battle of Britain when Churchill was guiding our country through the darkest hour. I think that's pretty cool and I think teenagers would, would see that. Now some people write off today's teenagers as snowflakes. I say let's have no more of that lazy slander. 
We've heard some of them today, and I think they are terrific and solid, and our culture is going to be safe in their hands. I suspect that they and their friends will be unembarrassed about looking at this sparkling trove of the English language. And I think they'll say, look, that's our inheritance. Take your hands off it. Don't you neglect it. Common prayer is common property. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. <laughs>